Hey peeps, welcome to another video. Today it's part one of the Vogue 8825 Sew Along. I've made this dress before and I made it in a very lightweight black jersey and I decided that whilst I loved the top and the way that that looked, I didn't like the bottom of it. So I took that off and I put on a solid black ponty and that worked so well, which is why when I went to Girl Charlie, I decided that I wanted something very light and drapey for the top, which I've got here. And then I wanted a heavier weight ponty for the skirt portion, which is why I've gone for patterned at the top and solid at the bottom. And I love the way it looks like I've put a top and a skirt together, but actually it's a dress and it is the best kind of secret pajamas because this thing is comfortable seriously comfortable. So this is a very different style of dress for me. I like it. I like it a lot. I feel very business appropriate. Like I could wear this to the office. I'm not sure how this is going to fit into my everyday life because as you all know, I do like my fit and flare dresses and they feel very much more me than this does. Having said that, I'm really pleased that I've made this and I will definitely work it into my wardrobe in some way, shape or form. So you will be seeing this being worn out in the wild if you watch the vlogs. Today we'll be having a look at which pattern size you need to trace and putting together the skirt. So let's get started. Okay, so for this sew along, you will need the 8825 Vogue pattern, your fabric. I'm using this ponty for the bottom and this fabric for the top. Now, this is a very wide pattern, so you may actually need to get more than the pattern states, especially if you lengthen the sleeves like I did. I ended up using two and a half meters of this and a meter of this just for reference. Pins, matching thread, French curve, pencil, double-sided wonder tape from Prim, marking tools, I'm using a friction pen and a chalk marker, scissors, tape measure. You're also gonna need a sewing machine. If you have one, you'll, you can use your overlocker. You will also need some tracing paper for your pattern. I use my massive roll from More Plan, which is huge, which is why I'm not putting it on the table now. I am gonna include links to that down below. Right. So, as you all know, I've already made myself one of these patterns, so I have my pattern here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the pattern pieces on the tissue and show you how I traced the sizes and arrived at the sizes that I decided to trace. So, as ever, you want to have a look at the back of the envelope to give yourself a rough idea of what sizes you're going to need. Now, according to this, I should have a size 18 bust a 12 waist and a 20 hip. And what I've actually gone for is a size 14 bust, a size 8 waist and a size 16 hips. So quite a large difference between the size ranges but quite a large difference between what they say I should have as well. Now I'm not going to iron these pattern pieces because they're a pig to iron, they're a pig to put away but if you're tracing your patterns out, iron your pattern pieces. As you can see here, these have been folded away and I've just ironed my pattern pieces flat uh, to get all these out. But I'm gonna get these pattern pieces out, but I'm not gonna iron them this time because I'm not tracing them. But when you trace, when you come to trace yours, please, please, or even if you're cutting out, please, please, the trace the pattern, please, 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 please iron your pattern pieces. It will make such a difference. Now, unusually for the big four patterns, they don't have their finished measurements on the pat tissue paper. So what you need to do is actually measure yourself and then you need to grab your tape measure and you need to measure the pattern pieces to the size that you want. And obviously you will need to double this because you are gonna be cutting two of these and uh, seaming this at the back. The one on the front, again, you need to measure it at the waistline and they've put the waistline in for you. And again, you're going to need to measure that and double it because obviously it's on the front. The other thing you need to take into consideration is this, this pattern includes a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. If it helps you, draw that seam allowance in on the places where it will be needed. So this is the back skirt piece, so you're gonna to need to draw seam allowance here and on this side. This is the front skirt piece, so it's gonna be cut on the fold, which it says there, so you'd only have seam allowance here. And if it's gonna help you, draw those seam allowances in and then take your measurements 
not including the seam allowance. So this one here is just, it's just under nine inches to the size eight and I need to double that and then I need to remove the seam allowance. So I need to remove five eighths twice from this side and five eighths twice from this side. This is when those fraction calculators come in very handy. And then here, measuring along the waistline. So this one comes to, again, around about eight inches. We need to remove the seam allowance from here. So two times five, five eighths of an inch. And then you'll double the remaining measurement that you have. Write those down and add them up and see what they come to. For the waist for the waistband again you because we have ties on this one you want it to be your natural waist measurement play maybe say plus half an inch of ease. For the hips go for an inch of ease maybe wearing a inch of wearing ease or actual hip measurement you don't want any negative ease on the those two places. So to find the to find the hip measurement, I measured my I found where my natural waistline is. I've then measured down to the widest part of my hips. For me, that was around about the eight inches, which worked out quite well because it's the length and the shortened line on the pattern, or just about. And so I have then done exactly the same process, measured from side to side, remembering to take out the seam allowance on the back twice and remembering to take out the seam allowance on the front just on this side because it's cut on the fold and I have then worked out that I needed to cut the size 16 for the hips and the size 8 for the waist and I just used my French curve and made myself a line a smooth line in between those two so which gave me a pattern piece that looks like this so as you can see I've started at the size 8 at the top and I've come down to where my hips are the biggest and I've done that out to the size 16 and then I've continued the size 16 right to the bottom and it's just using my French curve it's just a gentle curve through there kind of flat around the waist area because the, the actual waistline is here so this, this is a higher waisted style than say a straight pencil skirt so we had to take in this, in, this into account so that's where the waist measurement comes into play and we need to grade from there about eight inches down to my hip measurement. So that's how I arrived at the measurements for my waist and hips. Now this is the front piece and again it's pretty much the same process. You want to mark across, you want to measure across from, this is the underarm area and then this is the integral, uh, the collar piece, but the fa the, the basically the facing, so that gets folded back on itself. So this is the edge that you're going to measure to, and you want to measure across here. So you want to bear in mind that this is a blousy effect top. It does have the pleats in it, so you want to you don't want it to be your actual bust measurement, but you want it to be. Then you want to be there to be about an inch or maybe two inches of ease in there. But I have seen people make this dress and they've ended up with it huge on top. So you need to take into consideration the type of fabric you're using. Mine's very drapey, but if you're using a, a more structured ponte, you might want it to be a little bit closer fitting. I think with my drapey fabric, I've allowed for an extra two inches of ease, I believe. So you want to do the same. Measure across there, take away the seam allowance and then work out what size pattern piece you need to cut. So I've ended up going for the size 14 at the bust. Now, again, at the size here, so I've gone for the 14 here, and I need to bring it in to the eight at the waist. So again, I have just used my French curve and I have drawn a curve line from this point down to this point to get my pattern piece for my top. So I've also added in an inch of extra length because I do have a long torso. So I need to, that's a general measurement that I need to do. There are, There is a length and a shorten line on the pattern. So you're just gonna use that to add or to subtract any length from the bodice that you need to. And as you can see, it's sort of kind of 14 at the top and then it's very gently curved in down to the eight at the waist marked in all of my notches, all of my pleat marks. So I've marked in the centre front because we need to know where the centre front is so that we can accurately wrap our bodice pieces over and I've also marked in the fold line for the collar piece so I know where I need to turn that under. This is 
a point that you will need to reinforce and that's where the sleeves are going to go in. So you just want to add in all of the different markings that come on the pattern. This is where the ties are going to get put in and this is where the sleeve is going to get put in. Now I actually added an inch of length to my sleeve pieces as well because I wanted to ha make sure that I really accentuated the bell kind of bishop sleeve bit at the edge. I probably actually didn't need to do that but I'm very glad that I did because I really like that look. So again you can lengthen or shorten your sleeves as needed and again make sure that you've put in all of your points. Now I've cut the size 14 sleeves because the top of my bodice around the bust area is the size 14 so I need to cut the size 14 sleeve to match in with that piece and that's basically it you you want to trace everything off you want to label your pattern pieces clearly and make any alterations that you need to before you cut out your fabric I'm making version B which is the dress and I am going to start I'm going to start at step 18 which is going to be constructing the skirt and the only reason I'm starting there is because I have my overlocker set up for de uh, dark threads and I'm going to be using white overlocking thread for the top of the dress and I'm going to use black for the bottom because I don't have navy and black is going to be the best next option. So first thing that it wants you to do is stitch dart in skirt back slash fold on dart within one inch of from point of stitching trim dart to three eighths of an inch from stitching press dart open and point flat right i actually didn't do that on my one i just pressed my darts flat okay so we need to mark in the darts and what i like to do is i have done a little snip at the top of the dart leg and then i'm going to put a pin in each of the circles that they have put on the pattern and I am going to use my chalk marker because it's on a black fabric so, or a navy fabric so that my friction pens won't show up. So I'm going to use a chalk marker and just join the dots up with my French curve and before I take the pattern away I'm just going to see which bit of my French curve matches up best with each part of the dart leg. So this top one's actually fairly straight and I've traced this exactly from the pattern so that I know that the, the, it's the slight curves that we need here. So the second bit of the dart, the second part of the dart leg is actually fitting really well on from the 11 inch mark on my French curve and then the bottom again is fitting on quite well from the 11, 11 inch mark so I'll draw it straight from there and then I'll use the 11 and the 11 as this starting point on my French curve for um, actually marking the darts onto the fabric. Okay so I've placed my pins in and what I do is peel back the pattern and then I will use my chalk marker to mark each point and if you have a plain fabric like this you want to make sure that you're marking it on the side that you actually want to sew your darts on so this is my outside and then that's going to be my inside and there are my darts marked in so I'm now going to pinch those together pin them and sew them on the sewing machine and I'm going to use the uh, zigzag construction stitch for that so I have my darts pinned and you want to make sure that when you're pinning you're going through both sides of the dart leg that you've drawn on with your chalk and when you get down to the end you have a pin through the point of the dart. So I'm going to sew this on my sewing machine. I'm going to use a zigzag stitch. It's 2.5 wide and 1.5 long and this is a good construction stitch for knit fabrics. Most sewing machines will do a zigzag stitch. If your sewing machine actually has a stretch stitch use that instead but I'm going to be sewing everything with the 1.5 long and sorry 1.5 wide and 2.5 centimeter long stitch so what you want to do with your darts is sew it down to the point and sew off at the end of the point and leave yourself long tails that you can then tie off in a knot and I'd like to tie three knots in mine and then trim the excess off now the next thing that I'm going to do is sew up the back seam with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and I'm going to do that before I go and press the darts because I like to get as many steps done before I have to get up and go to the ironing board to press things. So every pattern has a glossary and that is usually after the lay plans and it explains what they mean by the different terms that they use 
and the skirt they want you to double stitch which is stitch seam along the seam line and then stitch again a quarter of an inch or six millimeters away from the seam away into the seam allowance using a straight stitch or a zigzag stitch trim close to the second line of stitching or overlock the seam so I'm going to be overlocking all of my seams because I have an overlocker so I'm going to make use of it but if you don't you want to double stitch your skirt seams and they've shown you here an illustration of what they they're talking about so you can see there's two lines of stitching there and then they're trimming off the uh, excess seam allowance to the second line of stitching so I'm going to go to the, uh, the ironing board and press my back seam over and I'm going to press my darts. I'm actually not going to trim my darts and press them the way that they've suggested. I'm just going to press mine in towards the centre back because my fabric is not that thick. If I was using a much thicker fabric I would do what they suggest and trim them down and press them flat. So I finished the bottom edge of my skirt front and skirt back before I sew the side seams together. So I'm going to pin the side seams together and um, assemble the skirt. Okay, so once you've sewn up your side seams, which I have done, you're going to want to hem your skirt. And I'm using Prim Wonder Tape, which is basically double-sided sticky tape designed for fabric. So I've placed it along the edge of the wrong side of my fabric. I'm going to peel the backing paper off and then I'm going to fold it up and stick it down and then I am going to use the zigzag stitch on my machine and I'm going to make it two and a half uh, 2.5 uh, long and 2.5 wide and that's the hem finished I really like the prim wonder tape it doesn't gunk up your machine and it just makes the fabric behave itself and it's less inclined to end up with a wavy finish as well so I'm going to give this a press, I need to press the side seams and then I'm going to change the thread on my overlocker and my sewing machine over to white so that we can make the bodice. any questions at all please let me know in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer them. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have please give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't yet please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Bye!